Express 3 cos 3x plus 7 sine 3x in this form, where r is greater than 0 and the angle is acute. We're working in radians here. Well, this involves addition formulae. So I'm going to write down the one for cos, and then I'm going to, I've got, see, I've got cos 3x minus alpha, so I'm going to replace a by 3x, and I'm going to replace b by alpha, and I'm going to make sure I stick a minus in. So cos of 3x minus alpha is equal to cos 3x cos alpha plus sine 3x sine alpha, which means because I've got r, I'm just going to put an r in front of that one. I times all of this by r, which is equivalent to timesing each term by r. All right. Now, because we're expressing in that form, we can now compare what we have with what is here. And I've got 3 cos 3x. So because I've got my cos 3x term here, it must be that r cos alpha is 3 for this, for this to work. In a similar way, I've got 7 sine 3x, so it must be that r sine alpha is 7. Okay, we've got simultaneous equations to solve for r and alpha, and then actually we're done. So I can, first of all, divide them. Divide r sine alpha by r cos alpha, because that will equal 7 over 3. The r's cancel, the sine alpha over cos alpha becomes tan alpha. That's why I did it that way around. Tan alpha is 7 over 3. And put that in the calculator. Make sure you've got it in radians. Okay, if you get like a large number, it means you've done it wrong. You probably put it in degrees. 7 over 3, 1.1659. And then for R, there's a really quick way to do it, and that is simply to square and add these together to give root 58. I'll just quickly explain where that actually comes from. It comes from taking the simultaneous equations and squaring them. which you need to do for this particular form because we've got a cos and a sine. And then um, we can add them together, which is going to give r squared cos squared plus r squared sine squared. So I can actually factorize out the r squared. And that's going to be 58. But this is identical to 1, which is where r is root 58 that, that comes from. Sometimes people like to kind of substitute the alpha back in. Um, so you could work out sine of 1.1659. Let me give that a go, in fact. Sine of the answer. Um, but then we seem to lose the exact value. 7 over that gives 7.615. And you don't, you wouldn't see that that is actually root 58 because you kind of lose it. So my strong advice would be don't, don't do that. Um, doesn't say to leave it exact, but sometimes it might. So I would say go with this method instead. And we're basically done. Therefore, 3 cos 3x. Was it a plus? Sorry, I just need to check. Plus 7 sine 3x is going to equal root 58. That's my r. And then it was cos 3x minus 1.17 if I'm rounding it to three significant figures. Okay, great. So we've got a sine and a cos term. We've added, absorbed them essentially into a single cos term that's just got you know a few transformations applied to it. So that was part A. Part B says give full details of a sequence of three transformations needed to transform y equals cos x to this thing here. Now remember, that is actually the thing on the right. So that is going to be the way to do this question. And the order may matter. It depends, like some of the order doesn't matter. So I'm going to start with y equals cos x. And then I'm going to do a stretch by factor root 58 in 
parallel to the y-axis or in the y-direction. So that's outside, I just feel it's good to get that one out of the way. And that's going to leave us with y equals root 58 cos x. Okay. Now I need to, I'm going to get the minus 1.17. So replace x by x minus 1.17. That's actually a translation. By 1.17 units in the x direction. Because it's inside the bracket, you do the opposite. Okay, this is hardly an introduction, by the way, into transformations. I'm assuming you're familiar with them, the stretches and translations and reflections. So I'm just going through the process of what you would then do. And then finally, we want the actual root 58 cos 3x minus 1.17, which let me just remind you is equal to that 3 cos 3x plus 7 sine 3x. And that would be a stretch by scale factor or just factor. Yeah, I think I should write scale factor actually. Scale factor. And because again it's inside with times in by three, you actually do a stretch by factor of one third in the x direction. Now, one final little comment. The, it doesn't matter whether you do the stretch in the y direction at any point, you could do it last, but the order in which you do these two does actually matter. And just as an alternative, I don't know, this is how I did it originally, so I'm just going to say I actually did the stretch first, which got me to y equals root 58 cos 3x. And then I realized, right, now if I subtract 1.17 to x, I'm gonna, it's going to be too much. So I actually had to do a translation by 1.17 over 3 because I did that one the second time around. I.e. the order matters when you're doing a translation um, and stretch in the x direction. And the same goes for the y direction. But because there's only one transformation in the y direction, that's why the order didn't matter. But it did for the x. I hope that makes sense. And don't, as long as you've got something that works, you know, there's potentially other options. Um, but those, this one is the best one, I'd say, because, you know, you don't really have to kind of, it's, it's just quite intuitive. But if you do it the way I did it and do the stretch first, then you then have to translate by 1.17 over 3 to make it work. Right. Anyway, that, those are our three transformations for part B. All right, that's seven marks. We've got another four. Um, this question just keeps on giving. So we've done the hard bit, to be fair. I think A is like the, the bit you, re, you know, revise practice lots of times. It's just a bit of a different one because of the 3x, but it still works in the same sort of way. B is a bit of a challenge because of all the transformations, because often you do these questions without a 3x, and so you would just get two transformations. But here we've got three. Now C, we're asked for the greatest value of the function. And we're going to really focus on the final function here. Okay, not the not the actual original one, but this one here, because it's much easier to, to look at, because the maximum value of cos is 1. And therefore, the maximum value of this function is going to be root 58. And it's going to occur when, when cos of 3x minus 1.17 is equal to 1. Now let's just take a little look at that cos curve. It's actually equal to 1 when 3x minus 1.17 is 0. 
does it ask for the smallest? It normally does. The smallest positive value of x for which it occurs. So there are other values for which it occurs, but they would be negative, but they're not going to be like, they're not, if we add 1.17 on, it's not going to make it positive. So it's going to be when 3x is equal to 1.17, although I should at this point technically use the non-rounded version, 1.1659. And therefore, x is 0 0.387. I think if you use 1.17, then that won't come out to be the same. So three significant figures here. And I'll leave this exact. I mean, it doesn't say... It doesn't really say, so I think if you left it to three significant figures, you'd be all right. And D is quite kind, especially, well, it's kind if you can do C, it's not kind if you can't. But the low, the least value is going to be very similar. Because it's going to be minus root 58. when the cos is minus 1. So again, it, there would be a point here where it's minus 1, but there's no way when I add 1.17 to that, it's going to be you know beyond um, pi over 2 and all that. So yeah, it's going to be here. So in 3x minus 1.1659, is equal to pi. Okay, add the 1.1659, divide by 3, and we get 1.44. All right, an awkward question if you, well, very awkward if you have not um, you know, got your head around this topic and mastered it, but otherwise I hope it's been okay and you know, along the way you've maybe learnt a little bit from my explanation. Cheers.